In this video, we will understand the concept behind histone chip seek. Chip seek stands for chromatin immunoprecipitation followed by sequencing. This is a particular technique or a variant of chromatin chip seek to understand the histone modifications and how that is associated with specific genes. It's already a mouthful. Maybe you don't understand. So let me break it down. So we know that there are different parts of the chromatin which are highly condensed known as heterochromatin and there are some parts of the chromatin which are less condensed and more open towards transcription factor or any other kind of protein known as euchromatin. Now euchromatin and heterochromatin has different kind of modification and in different video we have talked about it right. So euchromatin is highly acetylated in specific residues like H3K9, H3K14 etc. Also there are specific methylation and phosphorylation found in this region. In contrast in heterochromatin chromatin, different other modifications in the histone are found. So let's say one ask a question that which genes or genomic regions are associated with H3K9 acetylation which is known to be an activatory or basically which is associated with gene activation. So question is which genes in the genome are associated with this particular modification. We are trying to understand a global scenario and that is why histone chip seek will give us the answer. Let's find out how. So in order to understand that we have to basically understand the principle of chip seek. It's a technique to study DNA protein interaction. In this particular context we are trying to understand which histones are acetylated in a specific residue and interacting with the DNA and which DNA it is. So that is why it's a perfect technique. So obviously this technique that is chip seek can give us answers about transcription factor binding, specific histone modification, epigenetic modification, etc. So it's a very powerful tool to identify genome wide DNA binding sites for transcription factor or let's say for histone. So we have situation one, let's say there is a specific binding location to one particular location of the genome. There could be also another situation where the binding location is spreading across different locations in the genome. So we want to have an idea that where does the protein of interest or histone is modified. So in this example, what would happen is a particular antibody against a particular modified histone mark will be used and that will be used to basically pull down a region of the chromatin. Chromatin would be sonicated and severed into small fragments and using this antibody which is basically coated on a bead, the portions of the chromatin that is associated with these histone modification will be pulled down. So this is the pull down step. So from the pull down fragment it would be then asked that which portion of the DNA does this modified histone bind. So let's say H3K9 acetylation binds to which portions of the DNA in the entire genome. So what would happen after this? So after step four, we were left with specific fragments, which are basically DNA fragments. So they could be detected using high throughput sequencing methods. So in this case, each of these DNA sequences would be of different size and these sequences are known as reads. Now these reads would be aligned with a reference genome. So basically these reads are significant fragments of the genome, right? So you take these reads and try to compare it with a known human or mouse genome depend on the uh, sample that we are using. And then we align these reads with respect to the genome to ask the question that okay which gene or genetic sequences is associated with this kind of protein. So basically a peak would be called and this peak is basically number of reads in a particular location. So the, how does the data look like? There would be a genomic track in the bottom and on the top there would be peak. So where you see a high height of the peak that means at that particular point of region your protein of interest had bound to the DNA. In this case the peak is very strong at the promoter in this particular given example. Now let's come back to our own example. 
So we ask which gene or genomic regions are associated with histone H3K9 acetylation. So this is how the hypothetical data look like. You can see there are in the genomic tract, there are different different genes like gene A, B, C, D, E, F to gene N. And you can see from this data set, the peaks are giving us an idea where does this particular histone modification was found and in which genomic location. From this context, you can see the chip peaks are found in gene A, D and E. So gene A, D and E are associated with H3K9 mark. So this is how this chip seq data is very useful. Now what I talked about in this particular example is a very simple context. Now there could be complicated context like we are looking for multiple histone modifications and many other things together to get a deeper understanding about the gene regulation. For example, in this context, you can see for this particular gene, which is marked in um, <coughs> bluish green, you can see the H3K27 acetylation mark is detected throughout the gene body. Then in a separate experiment, but all these data are collated together in the separate experiment, one looked for H3.3 histone peak also looked at H2AZ histone peak. So H3.3, H2AZ all are associated with actively transcribing genes. Also serine 5 phosphate modification is found on the RNA polymerase which is an indicative of active gene. So if one can detect serine 5 phosphate, phosphate associated chip peaks in that location and compare all of these things together, that, then we can say that this particular gene, whatever is described here, is actively transcribing. One can even compare this with an RNA-seq peak to really understand whether the mRNAs are produced or not. So this is how we can combine different different chip seq again, against different histone components to get a deeper understanding about transcriptional regulation. Now it's not only about the chip seq. Chip seq can be combined with other techniques. For example, in this case, chip seq, there, there could be different different chip seeks that we have described here. Also, chip seq can be combined with ATAC seq. ATAC sequencing is another particular technique which talks about the accessibility of the chromatin. Also, chip seq can be combined with RNA sequencing as well. RNA sequencing look for all the uh, transcripts of a particular gene in a global context in a genome-wide scale. So it's a transcriptomic technique. So combining all these data, we can get a deeper insight. In this case, we see neuron and fibroblast are compared and compared for what? Compared for gene A expression. So notice the top side. So I'll take a pointer and explain. So notice the top side. Here you can see there is a strong chip peak for a particular uh, transcription factor and you can see that particular transcription factor binds to this particular region of the DNA and not only that the attack peaks are pretty much like the chip peaks attack peaks simply tell us there are more accessibility so these two portions are the data and this is how the data the phenomena would actually look like in a graphical fashion so if you look at the fibroblast tracts you don't see too much of uh, chip peak or ATAC peak in that corresponding region. That means that particular transcription factor of interest doesn't bind to gene A and doesn't lead to the transcription. And this data is also reflected in the RNA-seq. If there is less transcription, obviously there would be less transcripts. So the expression profile is understood using RNA sequencing. The accessibility was understood using ataxic and the transcription factor binding or a protein binding was figured out using chip seq. This is how multimodality was used together to understand deeper insight about transcription or gene regulation. So here are some application of histone chip seq or in general chip seq. So obviously generally chip seq can detect transcription factor binding, epigenetic modification, histone modification profiling can be done which we have seen as an example in this video. Also identifying enhancer promoters, identifying specific genomic regions and also disease related studies or which of the marks are associated with disease. These kind of studies can be done using histone chip seq or chromatin immunoprecipitation. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. You can get more notes and flashcards in our Facebook and Instagram page. See you in next video.